How are you doing today? It's Friday. It's Friday. It's time to hit the road. Time for the weekend. If you have weekends, that is. Uh, today I want to talk about something, the ability to say no, activating your humble alpha and the ability to say no. You know, uh, and a little excerpt out of the book. So this is going to be Uncle Stephen's uh, reading hour. <laughs> I'm going to read a little bit out of the book too, but I want to talk about first is that we talk about quality of life, right? Part of quality of life is doing what you want, when you want, with who you want, where you want, right? That's at least my version of quality of life. Everyone has a different um, a version. So when you activate, it means uh, to make something operative, right? So op making yourself operative in a specific way. And in this way, it's called the humble alpha. You know, everyone knows someone who's a confident leader at work while being shy and unsure of themselves in the corporate picnic, so to say, right? They're operating as a title identity, so their true identity isn't active, but buried somewhere under, under his, the internal sofa along with the lost change, right? So this person is a completely different person when they're off as when they're at work, right? You've sure, I'm sure you've all met everybody. Hey, David, what's up, brother? What's up, Olga? How you doing? And so that's what we're going to talk about. So like when I'm on vacation with my wife and kids, I focus solely on them. I may schedule for a daily purge uh, a, a few moments, but I, it's because I'd like to share my life uh, with you. And it's important to me that everyone always work, and I hear that, brother. Uh, and uh, so that's something that I sort of do, but many, many, many vacations, I don't schedule any work time at all. And I can only do this because I secure, I'm secure in who I am. And I know that I don't need to drop everything I'm doing just to appease someone else or win a client, right? Whenever, I, what, whatever I'm doing, I'm fully present for that moment. And in the rare moments when I'm not, my wife feels it. And it gives me a general reminder. I am humble enough to heed her reminder. So, you know, that's, that's sort of what it means when I'm saying, okay, you're unleashing and you're unleashing your humble alpha and you're activating your humble alpha, right? So, um, I talked to a leader, I'm reading this out of the book, just so you know. Okay. So I'm, I talked to a leader recently who talks, who takes calls in the middle of the night from clients all over the world. And she was worried about that. And I said, well, just set boundaries for yourself. When you're coming from a place of power and knowledge, then you know how to set boundaries. Trust us. Clients don't think, wow, this person is a jerk. You know, they don't think that at all. When you set boundaries, they realize that you stand behind your values, which means you're a person of integrity. And who doesn't want to work with a person of integrity, right? That you want to have someone with integrity. If someone says, like, my calendar is always full three weeks out. And uh, it just is. And if it's something really important, I'll say, hey, you know, give me the times you're available and see if I can fit it in, right? So I try to do, I try to do it in. But what's more powerful and sounds more confident, taking calls at 4 a.m. Or, or indicating you're available only from 12 to 6 if people want to talk to you, they find a way. People respect the heck out of out of you because your expectations of them are clear. So, you know, you remember what we said in the book? If you read the book, Unleash Humble Alpha, or you can take the course, college accredited course now. Go ahead and click on the link. You set boundaries and you clear clearly state your expectations because we always say if you have an expectation, you either verbalize it or you do not have an expectation. Having an expectation without verbalizing it is a guaranteed disappointment. And who wants that? So when your identity becomes crystal clear through our process, one of the huge benefits is that you activate that identity in every single sphere you operate in. When you activate, wherever your path veers, you have a, a, a quiet belief that you're going to crush it. And yes, it's a quiet belief. Integrity, boundary. So, <laughs> thank you, Jose. How you doing, brother? All right. Yes, and um, can integrity be learned? Integrity is a core principle. It's a core value that you have of yourself. It's more of an operating um, operating system than it is something that's on the outside. So, uh, sure, it can be learned, but it's through, it's through first of all, discipline to be honest and true and transparent to everyone you talk to. So, hit, honesty, integrity, transparency. And then it's through making that a habit, through making that a routine, and then finally becoming a part of you. That's where that integrity comes from. Integrity, um, you know, is doing what you say you're going to do doing what you say you're not doing what you say you're not going to do and then owning when you make a mistake and make it better own it right so and when you activate your humble alpha it radiates to everyone on your path whether they're a team member client loved one or stranger you'll rub them you'll rub off on them and they'll start feeling like they are able to crush it too now, how cool is that and this is what i mean when you own who you are the world around you adapts and accepts you. There's a lot of people that don't accept themselves, so they're not accepted. So they go into a party and they think, oh, no one likes me. Well, guess what? No one will. Oh, I'm a loner. Well, I guess you're a loner because when you think that, that's what you are, right? So you, you, you rub off on the outside world what's there. It's easy to say, yeah, because you're negative. That's the easy part. But being positive works just as well. But no one thinks of that. It's crazy. 
So activating your humble laugh identity is an intentional drawing a line in the sand to let go of your old identity and step into your new one. Your new identity isn't as much replacing the old, but rather superseding it. This process brings forth your actual identity and allows you to experience true resonance, which you may not have felt in a long time. Activating your identity awakens self-evident confidence, enthusiasm for life, and a feeling of certainty. Ooh, what's that famous word, certainty? Hey, Daniel, all right, brother. Yes. What's that word mean? Huh? Certainty. What's that mean to you? You know what certainty means to me? It means I don't have to worry about the future. Certainty in, in who I am as an identity and my purpose means that I know I'm going to get to where I'm going once I've planned as far as the goal goes and the benchmarks and the phase lines. When I know that, I don't have to worry about how I'm going to get there. The how doesn't matter because I'm certain. That's, so, that's why certainty is so important. The value you experience in your life from completing the stage alone uh, more than covers the cost of buying this book, and we're just getting started. This is li literally page 20, and we're already into the meat of it. Isn't that awesome? So as we wrap up the stage, before you go through the action steps, take a moment and imagine what life would look like when your humble alpha identity is crystallized and you're living it fully. What does life look like and feel like? How amazing does it feel to interact with the world at your best self? How does it feel to know exactly who you are because you decided it? Wow. Wow. Unleash your humble alpha, get the book, get the program, go through the college accredited course, get your leadership certificate from humble alpha. And I got to tell you, the military is looking at it. Military academies are looking at it. Universities are looking at it to implement it in their learning agenda. It is incredible. It is incredible what's happening with this book. And you remember at the very beginning, Lane and I said, this will change the paradigm of leadership. And it will. And we know it will. And that's why book number two and book number three are already on the way. So if you're one of those people that works 24-7 because you think you have to serve the client, it isn't about the client. You're going to make the client happier, give them boundaries, and set expectations for them that are verbalized that will show them the way that they can work with you. And when someone's 100% clear about how they can work with you, they are a happy customer. Yes, indeed. So it's not always being the servant and, and, and serving the customer um, as someone who has to jump when they say, you know, when they say jump, you say how high. That's that's not the way. That means that they can abuse you and use you, and they'll see you like that. People have respect for people with boundaries. People have respect uh, with with people who have clear guidelines and principles and core values. All right, sound like a good one. What a great way to start the weekend, don't you think? I think it is. <laughs> okay, you have a fantastic one. Thank you so much for joining. It took me a long time to learn about boundaries and space. I hear that, Ned. I hear that. I hear that as well. True resonance, amen, on my way, says Olga. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. You have a fantastic one. And remember what we always say. It's all about quality of life. Have a great weekend.